Hi, welcome to the welcome back to the old Doctor Who show. Your classic. Whenever the heck we feel like yep. it, uh, Doctor Who review podcast. And then honestly, it's not always classic. It's sometimes not even Doctor Who. It's like classic Coke. Uh, nobody wanted it. It came and went. But yeah, every once in a while, someone brings it up. That was new Coke. That was new Coke, we're, right? Yes. We're, we're the classic Coke. We're the you? classic. Yeah, exactly. So like, I'm, I meant to be talking about new Coke, and here I am talking about classic Coke. I'm all messed up. I was up way too late uh, playing Fallout 4. Oh, you're playing. I think I'm going to delete it. Are you, so are you playing? There's a remastered version, right? I have to delete it. Yeah, there's the... Um, I never played it. Oh, right. Okay. So I played... Give you a little... Because everybody's dying. Yeah, well, yeah, what, what's what his playing. Fallout background? Yeah. I played a couple of hundred hours of Fallout 3. Mm-hmm. Not anywhere near as much as I played Skyrim uh, <laughs> or Oblivion. That shows my mental illness. Wow. Uh, those, yeah, I get obsessed. Like I get obsessed. Like completionist? Like you need to do everything? Or I like, have I anxiety. Like the... No I have shit. anxiety. And, really? and if I have to do everything that I come across because mm. I'm – or it's like FOMO. It's like – Fear of missing out on, oh, my God, if I – like, I collect so many things, and I don't yeah. put a lot into strength, so I'm always <laughs> over-encumbered, which is not fun, because <laughs> I'm like, oh, this – I like, because in, in – for people that don't know, in those Bethesda games, there is a ton of crap yeah, yeah. everywhere. Yes. And so I have to look through everything. You have no idea And I'm like, useful. oh – Right. Here's an ID. Maybe in some point in the game you're going to need this. You don't need the ID. But this will get you into whatever. So it's just it's a lot of worry that mm-hmm. I'm going to miss something and following every quest and there's too many quests. Well, here's here's the good thing. And though. I love it though because I I would I don't it's it's fun to be in those worlds, but it's ruining my life. I mean, the, but yeah, no. I mean, I I totally sympathize with the not being leveled up enough in your 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 encumbrance is so high, but then you get the bonus mm. of playing the mini game of inventory management, which is always oh, the so best always part fun. of the game. It's the best part. And they don't always have the best UI user interfaces. Oh, no. So drag sometimes one thing very, at a time, and it takes like fifteen confusing. minutes to do anything. And you're just constantly sorting. Um, yeah, but, but it is fun, and I like having a canine companion. And all of that was brought on because I watched the show with my daughter. Fallout, which I really enjoyed. I thought I've it was only good. Seen it, the it got first, better as it went. I've seen the first four episodes, I think, mm-hmm. and I love the humor in it. Like the gore is so over the top in yeah. a way that is they're absolutely like winking at it the whole time. Like it's it's funny. It was it was a really good uh, so far. I'll finish it at some point. Yeah, I would recommend it. I liked it. I um, the acting's great. Characters are interesting, and yes, it has that Fallout sense of humor that is evident in the game. Yeah, it has been. That's it, Dan. You're also talking about TV. You texted yeah. me about TV. I did. There was something on the TV this time. It was um, a hashtag uh, Sandman This has nothing call to back to yeah, our exactly. Sandman podcast. <laughs> Which was the, arguably the ruination of our audio podcast. Honestly, maybe where it all went wrong. Maybe, maybe this is the, the <laughs> one decision that ruined everything. But no, whatever. We're both huge fans of Neil Gaiman and mm-hmm. Sandman, so... Netflix. I was very excited to see that they uh, did a new series called Dead Boy Detectives. Um, yep. It is in the Sandman universe. Not the Dead Boys. What is that? As detectives, because that's the adventures of Steve Bader's, and he's solving <laughs> crime <laughs> along in the seedy New York City underbelly of the late 70s. What's Steve Bader's. The, the Dead Boys, fantastic uh, punk band. Oh, okay. Uh, right. From back in the day. Gotcha. Uh, I just have as you know, everyone knows. Everyone yes, knows as, as we all as we all know. No, Everyone's Dan, go on. Away. Yes, Dead well, Boy Detectives from have you ripped, seen it? ripped from the pages of Sandman. I have seen episode one. Okay. Now my daughter wants to watch it. She actually it. brought yeah. me in. She was like, "Hey, you want to?" Which was great. And I actually, I watched Fallout with her, so we're yeah. we're we're simpatico on a lot of stuff. Well, that's good. Um, so my I remember them. The two boys yes. from an issue of Sandman, right? It yeah, was like yeah, yeah. a one and done kind of thing. Very was cool issue. And I feel like they go off at the end of the issue, from what I remember, as ghosts. And that was the end off of it. Off into them. the world, yeah. yeah. Right? So was- now I know it, it continued in in Matt Wagner and Neil Gaiman, I think, did a mini series or something. Yeah, I don't or, know. I don't, much- there was other stuff that I didn't read. I, I don't know how much Neil wrote for the, you know, 
the series that went on. I've never read it. I only read that that Sandman issue that has them. Uh, it takes place in a in a boarding school in England in the 19 teens. A kid gets killed, then later another kid gets killed and sees the ghost, and blah blah blah, and they go off. And anyway, and that's really a good. great issue. That's it's like a, a wonderful t- issue. One of those like it's, very interesting stories and like super scary. I feel like too. I've seen like 18 movies like that since I've read that comic. It seems to be. Um, it was Very one, one of, the, one of the stories that was like it was really creepy the entire way through. The headmaster was scary, like the other bullies that were all ghosts. It was it was great. So this this continues on. Now the main problem with this mm-hmm. is, the, is the Netflix problem, or maybe it's the the CW problem. I don't know. They really stretched the term boys to encompass <laughs> anything anyone under thirty. <laughs> so like, right. it is absolutely ridiculous. They have to keep making reference to the fact that. The main characters are all teenagers, and they are all yep. in their mid, solid mid twenties. Uh, now, I don't know, man. There's been a ton of shows with age appropriate actors, and this is not like one of those Euphoria type shows where it's like, well, we gotta cast someone a little bit older because it's really kind of on the border of inappropriate. It's not at all, at all. They couldn't. No, just... and I, and that's I, you know, that's their marketing machine i have been reading so many weird things about netflix what's true what's not true who knows but they have like an ai that they feed ideas into and it spits no. out whether or not they're going to do it no. like i had just read that um bob odenkirk and david cross were supposed to have a show mm-hmm. and i think they were solving crimes or something it sounded like oh that would have been cool but they fed it into the netflix machine it was like yeah no one's going to watch this <laughs> well, and i feel like they have their very you know they've got their spreadsheets um and it's got to you know check those boxes so like the they got to age the kids up they got to make it appeal to the same crowd that liked lock and key which they canceled pre you know they cancel everything but it's do. like they at times, like, I was worried when I was watching the first episode, like, that it would feel too formulaic or it would mm. feel like, you know, a show for kids. I'm an old man, too, so it's also part well, of me is like, well, why I'm not supposed to be necessarily we're, we're watching also this have a anyway. podcast reviewing a, a, <laughs> the longest-running children's show, <laughs> arguably. Uh, anyway, but yeah. Overall, it's, it's, yeah. it's really, really, really good. It is uh, kind of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which mm. also had age-appropriate yes. actors. Yes. Like, Alison Hannigan. I mean, Michelle Geller was probably older than her character. But, like, generally speaking, age-appropriate-ish. Um, but the characters are all great. The casting's fantastic. They, they, feel, they feel older to <laughs> you. Because from what I remember Way the book, older. right, they're, they're like boys. Like So well, it's like, like 12, 13, I think maybe. somewhere around there in the... One in the one issue, I have a feeling. Again, I haven't read it yet. I have it saved and ready to read at some point. I think there's slightly, or like maybe fifteen, sixteen in the right. Because once you die, you're locked in that age, right? right? And so there are bits without spoiling anything in the original story. And both of us have said we haven't read the other story. So I have I just know. watched the first episode. They mm-hmm. talk about one of the characters having spent time in hell. Yep. Um. Which I do not re- – that was not part of the no, Sandman so thing. So maybe that's just new stuff from – It's either from, new or it's in the – who knows. Right, in the existing uh, books that we they did. They tied in And really I have well. to correct myself because I, I will feel bad. Matt Wagner, I guess, drew that issue of Sandman mm. or was uh, – the bit pencils or pencils. whatever. So that's why he's credited as the creator. I don't think – I think you're probably right because you said you didn't know if Neil Gaiman wrote the other issues. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, unclear, but it wasn't a Matt Wagner, Neil Gaiman – but he, I mean, thing that happened after it was Neil created the, the original issue. Yeah, yes. And, and uh, so, unlike the Sandman on Netflix, which I think is getting a season too soon, right? Yes, it is. It is they're yeah. in production right now. Um, there's tie-ins, so the the hell is the same, like Hell of Sandman. Yes, we do. You see get the, death in, makes in the first her episode, appearance. You see death. You do see another. I won't say who, but you see another character from the universe later on, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, so the, those tie-ins are all there, which is super fun. You also get like the fun bureaucracy of of death of the afterlife yes. which is super it's great in a beetlejuicey sort of and way, all it, it beetlejuice absolutely beetlejuice also umbrella academy yeah another show uh based on a comic nice and know, weird done by way. netflix but like that whole 50s people on typewriters and rooms and tape and <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever yeah. but they're you know whatever that is called Super, Whatever that vibe fun. is, it, it has that. I think also, unlike the Sandman uh, series on Netflix, I 
think Neil Gaiman was less involved in this. I think he's, he's obviously credited as a producer. Um, I heard somewhere the most of his involvement was basically like sending notes of encouragement as they were going. So I think he was happy with the way that was going. And I was super pleased. I didn't have a whole like high expectations like I did with Sandman coming into this, but it was fantastic. Totally recommend. It's cool. Which is why yeah. you guys are all here. You're all here to find out what we thought you about got two, random TV shows. You got two good recommendations. You got Dan to... recommending uh, The Dead Boys. Detectives. Uh, Sonic Reducer, Dan. Uh, no, what? Dan's recommending. I'm recommending Fallout. Uh, yeah. The and there game you go. And the, and the show. So if I you guess. were just tuning in for a Doctor Who podcast, Too bad. You're, like, you're not even talking about the show? Like, no, we're talking about an audiobook. Well, we were oh, talking okay. about the show. Because but first, Eric, we're talking about uh, something else. In four, what? four and a half days as of this recording, oh, we, yeah? got, we got new Doctor Who coming at us. Wait, it it's is, in four and a half days? It is so soon. May 10th, we got... Wow. We got... I'm not prepared. We got, <laughs> we got, to, we got to get my time machine ready to go. Are yes. You, what do you need to do to prepare? We're, yes. Let's be good. So we're going to um, do these things like we're doing now. We're going to get to the mm-hmm. our, our discussion of uh, the Rutans vs. Centaurans audio story from Big Finish. Uh, that's why y'all are here. But that's why we're here. We'll we're getting also, on the other side of that. Jumping in and talking about the new Who as it lands because I think we're both pretty excited based on what we've seen. Yes. So far. and a listener had messaged us at some point, and I don't think I replied to them. Rude. So I'll reply now. What we think of the launch date happening, uh, when it's happening, or something right. is happening in Disney Plus first but only because i think the time difference right short answer i don't care right well <laughs> we've been on the other side so i think what's happening is it's being released on disney plus and then before it actually airs on it but like if you're in england you is that watch true it. though is that true like this so. is where no, no, we no, should yes. have looked stuff up I, did. I thought it was it was premiering when it normally did on broadcast television in the uk yes. and the streaming is what's before getting delayed that. no in... the streaming's before it now it's before. Okay, yeah. I don't even know. So, but my my the takeaway is I don't like what well, I don't care. I'm of not, course, not we don't care about when it's. We had the opposite problem for the years where it would air in the UK and then we'd have to wait until it right. actually came to us. And then they started doing same time regardless of the time zone. Now they're going the opposite direction. I think it comes to us on Disney before it actually gets on. But the how many? There. How long before? I think like hours. I definitely read some threads of people being okay. like, no, I don't I know. To, so I d- d- listen to Dan, because like, I'm, spe- I'm spreading a bunch of misinformation. But that's, this, that's this age, I, Eric. Yeah, I, 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 thought it was, I thought it was literally like happening at the same no, time no, broadcast-wise, but the then is, the, the eye player or something. is because we're going to get it earlier, and yes. people have to avoid their spoilers just like we had to do for a long time. Yes. Well, that's a good point, because people do ruin everything. Absolutely. And they, they will put whatever is important and mysterious and wonderful in the headline of their thing, so you can't even avoid it. Well, here's even uh, Just like that. you can't avoid pre-ordering oh. <laughs> uh, Goblin, The Wolf in the Well. I have the actual copy. Uh, it was sent to me. No, seriously. I saw your unboxing, you have to, which was You great. have to pre-order this. Like, yeah. pre-orders... You know, you got my uh, mental health, Mm -hmm. and then you got Mm pre-orders. And if the pre-orders aren't here, I'm not here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just – you have to do it. You can get it in multiple countries. It's not just for the United States. Uh, It's thick. It's a big-ass book. Look at this first book. Book, First book's great. It's a pamphlet. Yeah. It's a pamphlet next to this one. This one. Look at this. Look at this spine. You could set your watch to that spine. So that's it. Yeah. Uh that's it. That's all I got. I the uh, yeah. Should we get into the um whatever Wait, what whatever we're doing? We're doing? <laughs> Why are we here? Okay. So Should Lana we... Del Rey's born to die. Yes. Shake the crime stick, Dan. Jingle, we gotta shake jingle. the crime stick first. Jingle, jingle. Shake the crime stick. <laughs> the Knox of abnormal genetic coding, very malleable. People have been trying to uncover their secrets for centuries. They evolved a great aptitude for concealment. Crodox. Name is Crodox. Welcome back to the old Doctor Who show. No, that's what I we say. Did that one. When I start the thing, that, you're Eric Dan. And I'm Dan. Me Dan. Eric. This is the Santarans versus the Rutans. Yep. Episode number three. Born to die. It's written 
by Tegan Byrne mm -hmm. and directed by Ken Bentley in this third installment in the epic multi-doctor uh, time space ep uh, war of two very famous villains in the Doctor Who universe. <laughs> we are joined by Colin Baker's sixth Doctor. Uh -huh. Along with a companion that we had seen before, uh, seen Charlie Pollard. Oh, yes. Seen in our mind's eye. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very confused. Which we, I'm not confused. I get it. Uh, but I am interested in <laughs> what the audio. mystery. I know what audio know. is. No, I'm saying like <laughs> we saw Charlie previously with right. a doctor that takes place after this doctor, the Paul McGann doctor, which is right. eight, right? Mm -hmm. Um but we'll get into that. We'll, we'll cover that. Uh, they arrive on a planet filled with uh, creatures whose names I forget. They are the hard to find. The Nox. They're invisible. Uh, probably adorable. Sound like they're probably adorable. Uh, but unfortunately, the Doctor and Charlie uncover the Santarans are on there. We enter a murder mystery because mm. something is awry with the Santarans. The doctor is fingered for the uh, crime. <laughs> Friends. <laughs> oh, boy. Friends. Oh, boy. This is a PG podcast. Oh, why? Okay. Um, and then what happens? But, hey, you know, whatever. If it's, We're all uh, creatures. We're all adults um, here. We're all adults. <laughs> uh, he has to solve the crime before he gets killed, thanks to a Santaran Sunset Law. Uh, <laughs> friends who have listened to other episodes of Big Finish will remember that. Oh, yeah, that's from the uh, John Pertwee one, uh, which is not John Pertwee. It's played by something else. I'm rather quick on that. Dan, what did you think of the uh, Ready to Die, Born to Die? Ready to Die? Born. Biggie? Born to Die, Lana. Okay. Yep. Dan, what did you think? Uh... It was a super fun episode. I will tell mm. you. Okay. So. Okay. Here did, we go. I did enjoy it. Uh, I had uh, some things mm -hmm. I did not love. But overall, I thought it was a really fun story. The, the highlight of the story is, as we've heard previously, Charlie is fantastic. Uh, what an amazing voice actress. Just so much character and personality. Just coming right out of here. Everything else. Yep. just It's all right there. Wonderful. Um, and we get to see her play off a different doctor. So this is Colin Baker. I will tell you, because I'm, tell a, dumb, me. I'm a dumb dumb and didn't okay. really pay attention to the cover art, which doctor this was at first. <laughs> I was like, wait. Oh, so it was a total surprise. Listening to? <laughs> well, even as I was listening, because I didn't, I didn't honestly recognize his voice. Wait, you didn't recognize Colin Baker's I voice? I really didn't, because... Right, that's... because Okay. I tried to excise all of Colin Baker from my mind. Right. So, that, and you're always high. And I'm always high. I was <laughs> actually I was listening to this one on, on a road. Oh, trip. you have a. So uh, you're, you're. I'm sorry to interrupt the broadcast. We're going to keep this in your little four-legged friends back there. I got one of them. He's a uh, huge fan of Doctor Who, but only the audio stories. So what a cute he wanted, guy. He wanted to hang out here. So, but yes, keep going. Anyway, so you were not aware of Colin Baker. I didn't know it was Colin Baker. It was fun to to hear the two of them together. So Charlie can play off anyone and just sparkles. Really fantastic. Um, it was a it was a cool story. Uh, it was Santarans the whole way through, and mm -hmm. like, hey, where are the Rutans coming in? And the the way that they brought it all together was pretty clever. Um, the ending of like melding the the species together to create a super species but that sure. backfires. Like all of that was great. That old gag. Um. Yeah, overall, I have I have my gripes, but I thought it was really a, a good story. Eric, what did you think of this? Uh, well, Dan, as you know, I, I am a big fan of big fin. No, uh, I'm a big fan of murder mysteries. Mm. So I was very excited. Speaking of murder mysteries, I am watching Columbo again for like the 18th time. Oh my god! So I'm already <laughs> in like you know that mode. So I was very excited. Yeah. When all of a sudden it became like. You know, uh, uh, Holmes done it. Yeah. Who done it? Of like, oh, okay. I wish there was a little bit more of that. We can get into that later when we get into the story. Very good. Like, I, I like that part. I liked the, as you said, the chemistry between the two. I really so like the good. mystery because it's the first time that I can recall that we've had like a companion from the Doctor's future. Right. In, like, who who went from, like, a future doctor to a past doctor, which is just an interesting 
idea like yeah. to do that and now and I really want to know why I'm assuming I know that too. it's part of a big finish you know because this is you and I are pretty new to some of this stuff so I'm sure that's like a mystery that most listeners know already right uh, I thought they did a really good job of introducing that letting you know hey you know like uh, Charlie has already been with this other doctor she can't say for whatever reason but it it didn't matter that you didn't know. Like there was no, right. it wasn't too, you know. It was just like touched on. Like, hey, if you want to check that out, you can. Here, like, I like, like mean, how they did that. I thought the writing was good in that in that regard. I and I thought the like actors the were all were all really good from the, the Sankarans to, point, like, to the the yeah. balance between like if you knew that part of the story, then the way that it plays is one. But you didn't need to know any of that. Like we didn't know any. Yes, of that. and they just give you that little bit, little bit. And it's also funny because she kind of catches herself being like, oh, I can't talk about the Sankarans. Right. And what I, it was so cleverly done, and the casting's so great that she's able to pull it off in a – Yeah, and a, and and, it, oh, and, it. and again, I guess you would have to listen to it, but it's like, okay, we know from this story that she – when they went to the um, – I'm blanking on the name of the uh, place in Ireland. Oh, Giant's uh, Causeway. Giant's Causeway. Okay, of course she knows the Sontarans from there. She knows mm-hmm. the Rutans from there. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, well, oh, is this like an early story with her and this doctor? Like, they never ran across the Suntarans? Because when you right. watch the show, it's like, okay, here are the Suntarans again. Anyway, that was interesting. But I right. I just, I want to know, like, because why can't she just tell him? I guess that's a good point. Are like, we, is something going to break if he... Are these stories in Charlie's chronological order? Or, like, I mean, this could yeah, be anything. I, think, I don't, I, mean, I think you're right. I think that's she, right. Yeah, she clearly was with the... Future doctor first, like well, she, she was, was with, with another McCann doctor first, Paul McGann first. But who knows? Like, with... I don't know. Has she been with several other doctors? Like I don't. Oh yeah, that right? I, that I, I don't know. I, I'm assuming, but I think it's, it's that, at least like... the two we know, yeah. right? So she's with a doctor after. So somehow she gets knocked back in time, in a way that she can't tell this doctor, right? Which seems a little odd. I'm very intrigued by that. Uh, but it, it's fine. It, I love again. That. You don't need to have it. Um, the I don't know. Should we start run through the thing or just sort of jump all around? Like we start on a, you know, again, the old, I'm taking you to a beautiful planet. Always. We're going to, everything's peaceful here and things are not peaceful. Well, and Charlie even makes a joke about it. Like there's not going to be whatever, something like flesh eating ants or something like that. Like it's almost like, I do like that. I think I'm getting a sense of that in the Big Finish stories. There's a little bit of a wink. To, to these kinds of tropes. And I love it. I mean, it's it doesn't ruin it. It's not a wink that takes you out of it. But, like, not again. It, it, Another one of those. I really yes, like it, that. Um, so, yeah. So, you, you get there. And then we... I don't know if we've ever... I think this is the first instance of this species of camouflaging aliens that you yep. can't see. And then people have been trying to find... There's a couple of things with the doctor. Like, okay. So, he's like... Hey, people have been trying to find these species forever, and they can't because they're invisible. Right. And then you hear they see the species, and Charlie's like, hey, you said, you know, clearly I'm seeing a species, and there's a little right. comedy moment. And he's like, that's impossible. There's no predators here. And I'm going to be like, well, you just – people are constantly trying – like, you're here. Right, right. Why isn't something – like, it doesn't occur to you that – Another alien species is here chasing them or yeah. causing them harm. And if there was, was no fine. predator, then they wouldn't need to camouflage. So, like, where did they ev- – doesn't – whatever. It's all fine. Like, it's that all part's intelligent fine. design. But it's fine. But some, some things that the doctor says, you're like, what? Yeah. Really? That's the, the thing you came up with? It's fine. It was good. Um, so then, then, we, then we meet our first Santarin who does – who really is selling that scream, right? That yeah. – uh, Oh, the strangulation. Okay. All right. And you're mowing your lawn. You get that in your ear. You're looking (laughs) over the fence. Your neighbor's looking at you. And you're like, whatever, Fred. My neighbor's not Fred, but I have to be. I have to protect my identity. Fred Willard, right? (laughs) Oh, R.I.P. He's no longer with us. That's true. Way to to bring that up, Dan. (laughs) Always bringing up dead celebrities. (laughs) One thing I want to talk about um, is the music. Okay. Was really kind of interesting. Well, so there's it's it's kind of I have all on, over the place. I have a note on that right? specifically. I like how the Santarans have their own Santara. 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 
And then there is the Badlands soundtrack. No big too hard. No. Charlie's in the cell with the... And yes. The, I, to me, it was Under the Sea from Little Mermaid. But I, okay. you're right. No, you're right. It is true romance. It was true romance is borrowing from Terrence Malick's Badlands. Okay. which is a fantastic movie. Um, and then it was like, but it, it feels weird to hear that music in the context of like being put in a jail. It, so it, cause it's like a very like very pastorally, light, like I should be in a field robbing a bank or committing murder. Anytime there's like xylophone or marimba or whatever, it's, it is a light tone of like comedy. And like, this was not, I mean, kind yeah. of a little bit big. It's a dark it story. Right. Cause even that nice creature murdered. Yeah. The friend of the yeah. creature murdered. There's lots, lots of people of get murders. killed. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of story elements too. Like we talk about, okay, there's the who done it, why are these Santarans dying? Mm -hmm. That mystery. Mm -hmm. Mixed in with a civil war plot line that's right. going through it. Mixed in with the ultimate, you know, hybrid of what happens if you combine two different the warring factors. Creatures, like what happens to a brain if it's the, the in, inner workings are competing with each other. So there's like three really big ideas yeah. that go through it. And about halfway through, you kind of figure out like, okay, what's going on? I wish there was just a little bit more of the detective work. Like the doctor as a detective right. was kind of cool. And I feel like that thread just kind of falls away. And maybe if – it's because they're trying to fill in all these other ideas. Well. Because um, it's like, oh, the color here, it's brown. Oh, that's brown because this. And then, okay, now we're in an action movie. You know what I mean? Like, right. it just felt like right. they, they – it's fine. It's all good. No, I mean, no. I understand because it's, it's, it's only an hour. Like, there's a lot to Lots do to fill in, in an very hour. little time. But I will say, to your point of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did like the the detective stuff. I like that they actually split up Charlie and the Doctor, so that the, the Doctor has to play off of who was it? It was Skull. Uh, uh, Skull, Skull was the, yes, was the the cadet whatever, and and you can see him kind of changing a little bit over time, and being like, wait, this he Doctor's was cool. Kinda, he was good. It was like, it yeah, was, he was an interesting character. I liked character. having him. But so so there's all of that, and you're right. Like they had to fit a lot into one hour. But I will say my biggest problem with this story was. Though the sound design is awesome, there must have been a solid ten minutes of just explosions and lasers. Yeah, during the, the big story. fight at the well, end, just throughout. Yeah, yeah. But like, yes, right. especially at the end. It's yes, just, I mean, I can't follow what's going on. All I'm hearing is explosion over here, <laughs> ah, over here. Like, and it just kept going for so long. Yeah. It's like okay, I guess. <laughs> and in the middle of that like explosion, and then they're like, by the way. Everybody loses because if we save the Centaurans, they're going to kill these creatures. Yeah. If we don't save the Centaurans, they're going to kill these creatures while all of that cacophony of just insanity I mean, is going on. it sounded great. I just didn't know what was happening and it kept going for such a long time. So maybe they could have cut that and maybe had a little more story. But yeah, I'm not – I'm no big finish. What do I know? I also – like we've done – this is the third in a longer story. Right. And – I guess I was hoping for more of a connection between yeah. the three. Obviously, it's Centaurans versus the Rutans. Right. But this doesn't feel really that connected to the tunnel system that we had going on in the no. last one. Or even the mystery. I'm trying to remember how the Giant's Causeway ended, but that was like a mystery too. Like, why is the this happening I don't yeah, know. yeah but, but I mean, the, the connection they is, could have been just only, any the connection is only story. that there's a war going on and these are battles within that war but you're i don't see other than charlie being into them yeah there's there's not a whole lot of connection that we see yet maybe the fourth one puts it all together because the i the idea of like infiltrating the rutans who are known for changing shape mm -hmm. they would not how, how do you hide uh, among shape changers you put your own Shape changer, who I guess they're not shape changers, or like the whatever that kind of thing is interesting, yeah. right? Then it becomes like a invasion of the body snatchers thing, but that kind of falls away. Like, so I don't know if that's going to be part of we're not going to find out later. Oh, the person you thought was 
uh, a Centaurin was actually a root. Like, now they just it feel feels like this is that little bit is just here. These are very disjointed over t- or spread out right. over time. And I think the fourth and final of this. Story yeah, I think arc, it's just four. Uh, we'll is, see. Is Maybe it, compl- it all comes. It's a completely together. different doctor as well. So they're just really spread out over time. Um, I think Paul McGann is in the last one, from what I remember, with the artwork. No, no, it's oh, a, okay. uh, it's the War Doctor and no Charlie. It is. I thought I remember seeing like a artwork from the cover with him in it, but maybe it's I not hallucinated that. Yeah, you, okay. You, you imagine that one. Uh, I did. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was it was a fun story overall. Um, yeah. So like the Charlie bit. So like, I like her a lot, as you you had said. Like mm-hmm. that character is really interesting. I felt terrible for her though, because like her story. She gets put in prison. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, she's, in, you know, in charge of her own escape and works with the... What are the creatures called? Like, I can't just... Nox. The Nox. She's working with the Nox. And it's just sad because then the Nox finds a tortured Nox who dies. Yes. Then the no- Nox dies, you know, saving her life. Yep. And then don't they kill all the Nox in the the holding chamber at the end and I he thinks it... charlie's inside but charlie right, had escaped right. charlie got but out. there were other knocks More inside died. right yeah yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It's a, just a it's slaughter. a lot of death yeah right yeah. it's just straight genocide of this well, planet I, i'm assuming and, that they don't all die they don't all die but that's <laughs> so like what's genocide. like yeah. it's all happening like they're de- bro- literally blowing the the burning the place in front of us it, yeah. it, it was i felt like it's dark while at the same time being very light in a weird yeah. way. Or yeah. so, I don't know. It's, it's all good. Yeah. I feel bad. I feel bad. I, w- I was hoping – I mean I guess in a way by saving the planet at the end, she fulfills the promise. And maybe I'm just a softie. I wanted the Knox to make it. Uh, so I was like, damn, this one. ain't your – this ain't your dad's Doctor Who. No, well, uh, there are plenty of uh, Doctor Who TV <laughs> stories where whole races yeah. die. So, like, yeah. it's, it's no, pretty much keeping Of on. course. I, I, I kid. Um, it was good. I don't know. What, what happens next that you want to talk about, Dan? No, I think that was... That was Did I talk about the Twin Peaks uh, connection? No, but I see your, so your, the, your Bang Bang Bar shirt. Oh, yeah. I'm wearing my Roadhouse t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, no, the... I think it's... The, is it the Knox sound... <laughs> It sounds like the record s- skipping in Twin Peaks The Return. Listen to the sounds. I would like to hear a David Lynch produced Doctor oh, Who Big imagine? Finish story. I mean, Have you ever that. heard uh, the David Lynch telling the story of Return of the Jedi? <laughs> so, no. <laughs> it's great. I mean, you can find it online anywhere. Uh, people have animated it. But he's at, like, some Q&A or whatever, and he's talking about – and I don't know if you were aware he he was going to direct – he no, wasn't going. I, he was asked to direct Return of the Jedi. I had which, no idea. Which, if you've seen Dune, his Dune, and you see the third stage guild navigator floating in the uh, – the cloud of spice, like, and just disgusting mouth. Like, what would have Jabba looked like this is if amazing. we had, if that was it? All right. So anyway, so George Lucas, like, picks him up, and they go to eat, and he's, like, eating a salad. And the way he's telling stories, he talks about how he's just getting a headache, and the headache keeps building. <laughs> and then the, he takes him to, like, uh, Skywalker Ranch. He took me upstairs, and he showed me these things called Wookiees. And now this headache is getting, you know, getting stronger. And then he, like, talks about the story, and he runs, and he get, calls his agent. He's like, get me out of this thing. Oh I, do not want, I do not want to do this. <laughs> so he ended up doing um, Dune um, instead of Return of the Jedi. But what would Star wow. Wars be if David Lynch had directed Return of the Jedi? I, do, I, I, I like to think about it. Um, it yeah, also please. says a lot about George Lucas to, like – Pick a director like that? Pick a director like David Lynch so, is, is interesting. Field. Yeah. Maybe it would have been And I stories. wonder – this now here's me reading stuff into it. George Lucas has not been super open about his 
about the influence that Dune had on the Star Wars world. Now he mm. has said like, "Hey, um, it's they're both take place on a desert planet, but otherwise, blah blah blah." Right. Anybody that, that's read Dune or has watched the Dune films, they're like, "Well, oh, that's actually a lot like it." Yeah. So I do wonder, and I don't know that timeline. And this accusation is going to get me blacklisted. <laughs> uh, but was it like a question of, oh, he's interested in doing Dune. Let me pull him off the pro. Like, I don't want a Dune movie coming out because. Right, right, right. Well, or is that? whatever. You know what I mean? And then he's going to pull him off and have him put in return. I, I don't, Jedi, I don't and know. Then maybe how, that project would die. I don't know how scared George Lucas would have needed to be around, like, uh, Return of the Jedi not doing well after Star sure. Wars and then it strikes back. Yeah, like, again, this is me adding in fine. my own levels of uh, intrigue and, like uh, and apologies to George Lucas, but <laughs> come on, man. Right? Yeah, it's cool. I, I talk about things that influence me all the time. You could just be like, yeah, of course. Right. A seminal uh, work of science yeah. fiction obviously is going to God be. Emperor of Dune comes out in like 1981 with a giant worm-like creature that's carried around in a dais in Return of the Jedi. Somehow the character of Jabba is rewritten from a big hulking barbarian well, to a giant worm carried around in a dais. But I mean, there's that, fine. but there's also, there's also the Sarlacc. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on there. There's uh, very... Spice Runners and uh, yeah, they... Brothers and Sisters and... Um... <laughs> Family connections. It's fine. Uh, we're not here to talk about Dune and Star Wars and the influences. And, <laughs> and I'm how, just saying how much it's George okay Lucas to talk stole. about. No, it's fine. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Again, it's I don't want to. I don't want to get it's into not, that. It's influence. I think it's, it's influencing, but I think you anyway. should be open about your influence. Right? Sure. I try to be open. To, I'm influenced by all sorts of stuff. Uh, I got, I'm not trying to hide anything. Anyway, Dan. Uh, big finish. Uh, <laughs> born to die. I ready to die. It. It was good. Uh, it was a great story. It was good. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to the fourth one. I hope that even if they don't tie it all together, I would like to see them yeah. kind of come together a little bit more and not Be just be so loosely connected. But before we tie a bow and uh, ship this one off, yep, uh, first class. Uh, what do you think of Colin Baker, though? Because oh. you you said it in the beginning, you were not a huge fan of Colin Baker. This is our first big finish with Colin Baker. Mm -hmm. So it, I feel like it's a different side of Colin Baker. I love him in these big finish stories. What, where are you, I actually where are you at? Him, I liked him very much in this story. And, I and feel I like he's say... much more charming. Like he's – and he cares. Like you feel his, uh, uh, you know, um, empathy or emotional mm -hmm. connection to mm -hmm. Charlie when he thinks she's dying. Yes. And I feel like we never got that. Really, or we were heading in, in that direction. Team. That's the thing with Colin Baker. For that's me, true. Was, yeah, I guess it I was, really he was softening. Very much did not like him at first, and then grew to like him more. right because of the murder, right? The attempted murder of strangulation of Perry. That. Ta -da! <laughs> no, that was that fine. You off. No, actually, I had no problem with that at all. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, okay. No, just, no, he was just so cold and so disdainful of everyone at the very beginning, and I think that his character grew over time. So maybe if you see this as a continuation of that, yeah. I thought he was wonderful in this. Uh, he's honestly. great. I, like I, I enjoy him as an actor, and yeah. he's funny and he's interesting. And really funny. The that's timing why I, is great. Um, that's good. Yeah, would, I would be happy to hear more of uh, his big finish stories. All they right. were great. God, we're really doing new Doctor Who in like a week. It's really coming soon, dude. Here comes. Oh, yeah. I don't know anything about the first episode. Nor like, should we. Did they did they drop a trailer I or whatever? Care. I don't. I don't want to even react to Nothing. it. I just nope. want to go in. We're gonna go in blind, straight, and blind. Yep. And gouge my own eyes out. A little Oedipus action. Yeah. I'll be great. wandering around the desert. Um. If I you say Oedipus action. Uh, into a microphone, like I'm people will get the wrong idea. No, I was they're... simply talking about the uh, Antigone, you know, not the, you know, uh, Happy Mother's Day coming. Up. <laughs> uh, so use offer code. Uh, how do we get here? Oh for... boy, yeah, that's great. That's it. All right, good job. I think we're good. We we're good. And again, uh, yeah, this is available. You should just please pre-order that. I have. If every listener, when does it actually ship? This. When does it ship? I could get my gold teeth. July 16th. It's coming soon. July 16th. Get those pre-orders in, folks. Yeah. Okay. Awesome All right. America. I guess we'll see you in about a week. Oh, God. What? Wait. I have one more thing. 
And oh. this is kind of weird, and it's really unconnected. But I Wait, have these that's two, not like us at all. Uh, two pictures. This is a Tex Avery wow. cartoon original poster, I believe, of the Hick Chick. If any listener wants this, or I believe wow. this is Bob Clampett, a uh, very early Tom and Jerry, Zoot Cat, if you remember, that's the one where Tom gets the suit. These posters, you can have them. Wow. I will give them to you for free. I'll, I'll have a caveat. If you're overseas, you have to pay for shipping because it's so expensive to ship anything overseas. If you're in the U.S., I will just ship them to you for free. So if you listen to this, you wow. get that. You can leave a comment or you can email me. Uh, you can go to ericgrissom.com and send me a note or whatever. I'll send it to you for free. That's very cool. For Guys, free. He didn't even offer it to me. That's exclusive to you all. Oh, you can have no, it, Dan. No, my no, wife is, is cleaning out all of my stuff. <laughs> stuff is disappearing. So if rather than end up somewhere it shouldn't be, I'd rather it be in the home of That's uh, awesome, TODWS though. listener. Very cool. Very okay. Cool. All That's right, it. folks. See you in uh, about a week. See you at the movies. Yeah. Where's my robot? You know?